Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Comic Book Lowdown. I'm Wellington, and today is going to be another pull week video of mine, and I've got five books for you today. And uh, sorry, I'm putting this video up, this video out a little later today. I've had a lot of things to do throughout the day, but anyways, let's get right into the comics and starting with on my computer. I have Justice League number fourteen. Um. Honestly, this, this story is alright. Uh, of course, they had the two stories in it, and I'll get to them. Uh, the main story, we left off last issue where uh, the cheetah bit Superman, and Superman turned into a cheetah himself. Uh, in this issue, that pretty much gets resolved quickly. And this is really just a, uh, a character issue between this love thing that's going on between Superman and Wonder Woman. And uh, there's they go to Smallville. There's there's not much in this issue. Um, it wasn't very exciting. This main issue or this main uh, story wasn't very exciting at all. And uh, the, there's a there's a funny part at the end of the main story with Batman. But uh, that's really the only thing that I really enjoyed in this issue. And, uh, or at least in that main story. And then, um, the second story, it deals with, uh, uh, Black, a excuse me, Black Adam. He's brought to the city, main cities, and, uh, kind of just adapting to things. He kills somebody. And, um, he goes on the search for, uh, Shazam. And there's some, there's some funny stuff that happens throughout that second story. I definitely like the second story better than the main story, but uh, at this point, I'm not really interested in the Justice League anymore. Um, 14 issues in, and uh, I've lost my interest, so I think I'm gonna just stop reading it now. Um, I might read it here and there again, but I'm probably gonna drop it after this issue. I it wasn't a bad issue, and uh, things. Things aren't bad. The art is pretty, uh, pretty solid, and uh, the stories aren't bad. They're just not interesting to me. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay off the Justice League for a while now. I gave this story a three out of five. Next, and now let's hear where everything else I got, everything else I read, was great. It was amazing, and I'm just gonna start off here with uh, Minimum Carnage Omega. First off, just looking at the cover, it's pretty uh, pretty cool, and that pretty much happens in this book. Um, the art done by Lan Medina, really glad that he came in on this because uh, I said in my last video that when I reviewed Venom number 27 that I wanted uh, Medina to draw the symbiotes around, just big shots of like a bunch of symbiotes and carnage and this is what I got in this and so I was really happy with the art and um, the story finally the story finally goes to the city where I've wanted uh, this carnage story to be the entire time I wanted it to be Scarlet Spider, Venom and Carnage duking it out in the city and it finally takes it to that place and um most of the story is told through uh, the news article that Katie Kiernan finally produces about the whole ordeal that she's been through. And um, the art in this is amazing. The action is amazing. And uh, there's some really good character stuff between um, Scarlet Spider and Venom. And if you read it, you'll really enjoy it. Uh, Carnage does get what he deserves at the end but at the end at the very end of this we're left with a even worse carnage than before and uh, you'll see why if you read it if I have to grade this 4.5 just amazing uh, uh, Yost and Bun great job on this Chris Yost and Colin Bun great job in finishing out this story uh, I'll be reviewing the entire story arc 
I'm going to read it over again. I'll be reviewing it sometime soon. Uh, but first, I got a couple of other things that I want to review before I do that. I'm just continuing. Uh, I'm going to review now another thing, last thing on my computer. I've got Amazing Spider-Man 698 on here. And, uh, of course, the writing done by Dan Slott and new artist uh, Richard Elson. And when I first saw his art in this issue, when Spider-Man first shows up, it was absolutely amazing. His art, he draws Spider-Man so well, I my eyes popped open when I saw the first page with Spider-Man on it. And it was consistent throughout the entire book. This is just a great book for art. And the story is really good. I know why they now need to have a point one issue uh, throughout throughout this ending of the Amazing Spider-Man, um, because this issue, this six ninety eight, there's only supposed to be six ninety nine seven hundred left, and they're gonna do six ninety nine point one. But that's because six ninety eight didn't cover really much of anything that is going to go into like any any it doesn't start a story arc it just uh it's a one shot pretty much and it's very happy one shot for the most part peter parker is he's telling himself he's going to uh start to live his life in a new way and be a lot happier with his life and uh if i my guess is that this way of living is not going to continue for very long because of what's going to be happening very soon um, I don't know what's going to be happening very soon. And I've said before, I'll say again, I really hope that they don't kill Peter Parker off as Spider-Man. That would be really bad. I'd be very angry with that. But um, there's some, uh, if you've seen the cover, it has uh, Dr. Octopus and he's on his deathbed pretty much. Got all this stuff in his mouth and all that kind of stuff. And uh, he's dying in this and eventually just... He's gone, pretty much. And um, just read it, and I definitely recommend this. Um, there's not too much bad to say about this issue. Uh, nothing I can think of off the top of my head. I just finished reading it, though. So, But I give this a, a 4.5. Again, just great issue, and the art just really boosts it up. Uh, but the writing is great as well. So, um, next I have Daredevil issue number 20. And this is going into even more detail. This story arc is still not done. Uh, it doesn't have really a name either, but it's still not done. And last we left off with the coyote who uh, Daredevil said was the spot from the first issue. And, um... The spot is a guy that uh, ha can make all these portals that he can go through and all this kind of stuff. And the last issue we left off, he took Daredevil's head off. And um, we find out, not giving too much away, but we find out that there's a lot more people in uh, the same situation that Daredevil's been in. And uh, just read the issue and you'll know what I'm talking about. And... Um, so throughout this issue, Daredevil is trying to get Coyote to give up his plans for what he's doing, why he wants to do it, and who he's doing it for. And uh, he gives out his plans pretty much. And his plans are very, uh, they're very real. They're very real in the times. And uh, you can definitely find these things in the news a lot. And it's very disturbing if... Uh, if you really are in touch with that side of the world, uh, it's very disturbing, you know, thing that he, that the coyote's doing. And at the end of this, it takes even more of a turn, and things start looking bad for both Daredevil and Coyote. And that's all I'm going to tell you about this. I'm giving Daredevil a 5 out of 5. And finally, we're leaving off with the last story. I got for you, and that's 
Daredevil, Marvel Knives Daredevil number or not Daredevil, Deadpool number two. <laughs> um, this is just a great issue. I was laughing so much throughout this issue. There's so much funny stuff and then great story stuff as well. It's uh, you're not gonna find the most emotional stories in a Deadpool book, but definitely this comes with some of the funniest. And I had said before. I was really excited to read this new Deadpool series because of Brian Posehn, and I think he's a pretty funny comedian, so I thought of funny comedian, funny character, that come together, and so far, so good. Uh, there's some really funny scenes throughout this, um, even the, the Marvel AR things throughout this with the Marvel AR app, there's funny stuff that with uh, Brian Posehn and that. Um, Ben Franklin's in this, but he's not hes not a zombie, or he's not an undead, he's just a ghost, and apparently he's been around ever since he died as a ghost because of he runs on electricity now, so <laughs> there's some funny stuff with Ben Franklin, uh, there's funny stuff with George Washington and JFK, they're working together, um, excuse me, there's uh, Teddy Roosevelt, is in this there's some funny stuff with uh, Deadpool and Teddy Roosevelt where uh, Deadpool is pretty much acting like Bugs Bunny to uh, Roosevelt's uh, Elmer Fudd and the way that they uh, draw those panels the way that Tony Moore draws those panels it looks like a Bugs Bunny cartoon and it's pretty funny stuff and <laughs> just throughout this whole issue there's so much funny things the way that it starts is hilarious um, and just pick it up. If you're not reading Deadpool, you don't even have to have liked Deadpool in the past. Just pick these last two issues up and you'll definitely like these these issues because they have good story and they're very uh they're very funny as well. So if you just want something to ease up the mood, if you have too many tensions in the room from all your uh emotional comic books, read Deadpool and all that will go away you'll be happy again and so that covers all my books that I picked up for this week for uh, my pool week but uh, yesterday was Black Friday and my comic book store was having sales and so at 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. they were putting uh, comics all comics except for new releases uh, releases at 50 percent off didn't want to waste too much money though but I did get two trades and those trades happen to be uh, one that I'm pretty much halfway through. Actually, I am halfway through already. And I'm gonna. This is gonna be my next uh, trade paperback review. And it is Spider-Man Rain. So far, so good throughout this story. Very. Uh, I like it very much. Reminds me definitely a lot of um, Dark Knight Returns, which is the last uh, paperback review I I did. So I might be throwing some comparisons, some uh, some things with those two together. And uh, the second thing I got is Daredevil Born Again uh, by Frank Miller and Dave Mazzuchelli on art. And I've read a couple pages of this. Not, uh, not too much yet though, so I can't really... Uh, I haven't gotten to the nitty gritty of this trade yet, but I know that it's definitely a good one. Uh, there's a lot of good things said about this, so I'm very excited uh, to get around to that. I still have these uh, two Marvel Omnibus right here under the camera. I'm using it as a uh, part of my tripod right now, so I can't really show you. But I'm halfway through, um, actually I'm halfway through both of them right now, so uh, when I finish those, you'll get an Omnibus review. And those will be uh, definitely fun reviews to do won't get too in depth on the stories though but uh I'll, we'll see when we get to that point but right now i'm wellington signing off with the comic book lowdown and i'll see you guys next time